That was a great little kickoff to warbler season. Grand Isle is the only inhabited barrier island in Louisiana and is an important stopping point for hundreds of species of birds during spring and fall migration. Although only 10% of the original forest habitat remains, the Nature Conservancy of Louisiana has preserved small tracts of land throughout the island, about 41 acres total. Today, I'm starting at their Grilletta Tract, a 0.8 mile walking trail to see what spring migrants I can find. Hey everybody, I'm here on, <laughs> sorry I'm distracted by all the birds. Um, I'm here on Grand Isle at the Grilletta Tract, um, and there's warblers everywhere. I haven't really been out to experience the full warbler migration yet, and I think this is not even like really close to what it what it was. There was some serious fallout here a little while ago, but I had to get out and see what I could find. So we're gonna walk this uh, Grilletta Tract. I've already had a hooded warbler, female eastern wood peewee, and American redstart, and a catbird flying through. But it's, uh, it's awesome, there's literally just warblers flying on the path, walking around. So I'm really pumped to uh, see some colorful warblers today. I started walking the trail and was amazed by not only the sheer number of birds, but also the up close views. Further down the trail, I stepped onto an elevated boardwalk and found even more birds flitting around. Black throated green in there. We got a hooded female right there. A little something else. Uh, northern water thrush right there. One of the main birds I've seen here is the hooded warbler. There's just been a ton of males and females. Um, I've seen a couple Kentucky warblers which I always love seeing because they're pretty rare in Wisconsin and uh, I just find them to be super beautiful. It's pretty uh, <laughs> pretty wet back here. We'll see uh, how far I'm able to go. While scanning the ground, I noticed a wood thrush picking through the leaf litter. I stopped to admire it for a few minutes while it ate. On the way back, I spotted many of the same species, but also picked up a few new ones. Nice, red-eyed vireo. So something I want to mention when you're out looking for warblers is it's really important to scan every part of like the tree or the forest or whatever area you're looking at because some species prefer to be more on the ground when some prefer to be way up in the treetops. So it's good to cover all the different habitats and make sure you're not just, you know, either looking down or looking up that you're actually actively looking at all of them. That's one of the ways they're able to coexist as they feed in different ways and different places. Finally got a nice video of a blue winged, and by nice I mean you can tell what it is. <laughs> the bar is, is low for uh, these quick moving warblers. They also have a mister over here, these guys are really in the lap of luxury. This trail was super cool. Tons of hooded warblers, um, other warbler diversity, the hoodeds are literally just like on the path, <laughs> like they're, they're literally just chilling. Oh, let me see what that is. That was a great little kickoff to warbler season. After walking the Grilletta Tract, I headed to the Landry LeBlanc Tract, another section of forest managed by the Nature Conservancy, where I was able to pick up a few new species.
Many of the birds were visibly exhausted from their migration journey, including this indigo bunting, who was extremely sleepy. On the way to my next location, I also noted a summer tanager and a prothonotary warbler, before spotting a species that I'm always excited to see. After getting some obscured views of a yellow warbler and spotting a bronze cowbird on a fence, I cruised some flooded fields and marsh habitat, picking up some new species for the day. While driving, I was surprised to find a somewhat elusive bird perched on a power line. Right up here is a common nighthawk, and it's rare that I ever see them sitting during the day. So it's really awesome to actually see one. I finished the day by scanning the Grand Isle State Park beach under a beautiful sunset. Here I was able to find one of my favorite coastal species, the red knot. After enjoying my views of the feeding red knots, I decided to call it a day. All in all, Grand Isle is a great place to view a variety of amazing birds during their incredible migration. The colorful and unique species I saw today are just a handful of the avian visitors that stop and use the resources here, and I'm excited to see more of them in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. What you doing, little guy? Gotta get out of the road. <laughs> Buddy. There, that's better for you. <laughs>